Hi, my name is Kurt Schaefer I'm with Symbiotic Network Technologies, and I'm bringing you a video teaser for our webinar coming up uh, this Wednesday, May 22nd at 1.30 Eastern Standard Time. We're going to be talking about using Maltego in the Canary framework uh, and some of the mal uh, plugins such as Malformity and Cuckoo for Canary uh, to do some analysis on a URL that has been reported to us as possibly suspicious. Now what you see in front of you is a Maltego report that I had from such a case. What I had was a customer that submitted a malware sample to me and asked me to reverse engineer it and to figure out what it may be capable of doing. So I thought, what a good time to test out the new Maltego plugins I've been playing with. So I ran strings on the binary and thankfully it wasn't packed and I found a URL uh, that was used for callback that was www dot file dash link dot org so I threw that in my Maltego interface uh, right over here you can see that file dash link dot org as a URL, a URL palette from that URL I basically wanted to see if there were any other servers uh, hosted on that domain I choose a transform from right click and shows DNS from domain and this will actually look for websites using a bunch of different methods to see if there are any other domains or servers hosted on that same domain. What I found were a file, a www.file-link.info, um, a mail.file-link.org, sorry, uh, a update.file-link.org, and uh, two name servers for that. Those are pretty standard. The updates one is kind of weird. Uh, but I'm not too worried about that at this point. The next thing I wanted to do is find out what the IP address was for this server. So I right clicked it and I choose uh, the transform to get IP address from the domain. That led me to the IP address of uh, 83.69.230.9. Uh, I basically wanted to see what other systems or services or websites were hosted on that uh, IP range. So I right click, I chose to run transform and to basically search for other uh, websites using this same uh, name server and domain uh, IP address range. What I found was this uh, uh, micro-updates.info. One thing I found interesting about it on doing subsequent research on that domain was that it had similar servers of www, mail, um, name servers, NS1 and NS2, and, and it had updates as well, so that was kind of interesting for me. The next thing I wanted to do was see who was related to this as far as a person. Now, a person that is the admin contact for a network doesn't mean that they're responsible for the activity that's going on. Uh, but it's a good thing to know so we can get a location and, and get some more information potentially about what the network might be hosting. What I did is I found a, a user that goes by three aliases. Um, we're basically going to focus on this one that I'm circling right here. I'm not going to reveal the person's name, um, but I found that information. And basically I wanted to find out what other email addresses this user may use. So I right click it and I choose emails from person. And this particular user had some interesting uh, email addresses. Some of them included an item such as mayor at citynamecom for example. <laughs> uh, his profile that I've looked up re um, in more de detail doesn't show him as a mayor of any, any cities that I was able to see. So I decided to follow uh, the domain standard for the email. Uh, and basically I was looking for the location of this IP address in this domain and that lead me to Eastern Europe. Uh, it itself is not interesting but we'll see how that unfolds. Um, so what I wanted to do at this point is I, I definitely found some information that I, I think is interesting and I want to dig in more detail but I wanted to take a different angle just for a second. So I dropped another entry of file-link.org over here and I basically pulled the uh, abuse email address from that domain and I started to say who is this related to? What I found is this related to another gentleman in an Eastern Europe European site. Uh, this gentleman is uh, a worker at a university that I won't name but he works in the um, 
medical, pharmaceutical, and scientific uh, areas of that university. One thing I did notice from this user is he had a lot of interesting, random, and strange Gmail and Yahoo email addresses. Uh, for example, I'll show you one over here. Um, this section out, definitely. Uh, right here, if you find one. Uh, this one is 94594.3 uh, dot bm at omp415.mail.mud.yahoo.com. Now that, that's an interesting email address. I uh, started tracing that and saying what other email addresses are related to that and I came to this specific email address over here which was dsmith at, at firstlab.com. Now dsmith does not resemble the, the actual person's name so I found that kind of interesting. What I noticed through this hierarchy is that this user continued to use dsmith pretty regularly for key servers in the hierarchy and key systems in the hierarchy. Speaking of the hierarchy you'll notice that that uh, email address actually registered in multiple lists of domains down here. You can see there's about seven or eight of them, each of them having a grouping underneath that's about five to ten. And what you, what I found interesting about these is that each of these single uh, components here that I'm pointing to are covering a different industry. Uh, the three that I found that they covered are educational, medical, and government. This user actually has a .gov email address or is at least utilizing a .gov email address uh, in a couple places, which I found quite interesting seeing that the user is tracked back to Eastern Europe. Not that that's impossible, just quite interesting. So now I wanted to, uh, I've seen two sides of the story. I've seen s some raw domain information and I saw the IP information, but I wanted to see if there's any links between this. I'm going to point back to this dsmith email address that I've just pointed to and highlight the links that it connects. And if you look, it connects all the way over to here to another email address that is dsmith at samsoncc.edu, which is a completely different domain. Uh, it's an educational domain, but it's completely different than any other one is used. What's interesting about that domain is it's tied and linked to heavily a email account of jbsmith1313 at embarcumail.com. And why I say that's interesting is because that email address also links to our first user on the network. So what we see here is a potential connection between the two. And we see a quite an architectural um, setup here. A very, very tight hierarchy, very structured network of systems. So we have two users that seem to utilize email addresses and then group other email addresses related to those into the same uh, industry. Again, .gov email addresses for .gov, .edu for educational and then medical. The one thing I can't show on this report is that each of these email addresses actually spired off and purchased and was the admin for a domain. The domain was consistent with the industry. .gov was .gov website, .edu was .edu website, uh, the medical websites, uh, there were a number of those, but basically the email industry matched the website industry. So if you look at this, we have two users with a combination of about 150 email addresses. Now I have 10 to, you know, about 10 probably if you count all of my emails. Uh, some of you out there may have more or less, but that, you know, that even seems a bit extravagant. 150 is way beyond normal. In my mind, when I see this kind of hierarchy and this kind of tieback, uh, what I find, it, what what comes to my mind is a traffic distribution system. Uh, this is based a lot on a lot of information, but some things like the sheer number of websites hosted by a single person that is utilizing different identities. You must admit that using a different email for each domain is a bit excessive, even if this were legitimate. So each of these emails had a different website. And what I decided to do was take some samples of these websites and send those to my uh, sandbox. That was really easily done um, by using the Cuckoo for uh, Canary um, plugin. And right here I right click and choose sandbox. And I could say send this to my sandbox. Essentially that sends my URL to my built-in sandbox on my lab here that will go to that website and we'll track and, and monitor any changes, anything that's dropped to the system, any executables that are run, and everything those executables do. Automatically right from this one single interface. It will then present those information back to me. 
So I chose about 15 random uh, sites from each of these emails. I'm trying to be pretty random with my choice. And what I found is every website had a malware sample that matched the same MD5 hash and essentially had a callback to two domains. Guess what they were? They were the file-link.org and the mail-micro-updates.info. Uh, so they all called back to the original sample that I had found. Uh, what I found is the www and the updates both served as that. Now we have a little bit more information because now we have actual malware that we have tracked that we know is malicious that actually reaches back to the systems that we started from. Now with threat intel research, like any intel research, even detective work for example, you may find things that make sense now, but after a new revelation you may find that the trail ends with no answers. Not all intel is good intel. You must think about information you're coming across out of the box. Think of all the possibilities of why A would lead you to B, no matter how irrational the thought may be. And soon you will hopefully come to uh, across another piece of information that will show you the ties or the connections and that they're correct. That's not always the case. As you do more and more of this, you'll find that things may lead you to assumptions. Like you saw me assume that this is a traffic distribution system. I mainly assume that because of all the research that I'm doing, I can identify them quickly by their patterns. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, but what you have to continue to ask yourself is what if to see if there is another explanation for what you're seeing. This about ends the teaser for our Threat Intel webinar for Wednesday, Mar again, May 22nd at 1.30 Eastern Standard Time. At that webinar, I'll be detailing advan the Advanced Threat Intel course that I'm working on with TrainAce Advanced Security. Uh, that course will teach you all of the items that you need to walk through investigations such as this and come out with results, hopefully in, in very successful for you. A number of labs will deal with things such as using Maltego and configuring Maltego and Canary and these related APIs to take advantage from all of these advanced transforms so that you too can has most of your threat intel tools from one interface. I'll see you guys on Wednesday. Have a good week.